My name is Lydia. I'm an alumni from RSM. I did the bachelor and the master's program. So I will give a little bit of information about my experience um, and some information, practical information about RSM. I will do my best to try and stay on time. Usually this presentation takes me longer, so I'm going to um, go a little faster than normal, but I will leave my contact details at the end. So if anything's not clear, you can always email me um, and um, ask me questions later. Um, so a little bit about me, basically, I've lived in the Netherlands since I was nine years old. So if anyone has questions about, you know, Dutch life or culture or whatever, you can also ask me. Um, and then after I finished, I did my um, international baccalaureate in high school. And then I went to do my bachelor's in IBA, International Business Administration, which is a three year program. And then after that, I did my master's in marketing management also at RSM. And after that, I moved to London for a year and now I'm in Taiwan. So I always like to give um, more personal reasons as to why I chose RSM. Uh, I'm sure everyone has different reasons for choosing um, a university, but these were the things that I considered when I was applying to RSM and also when I decided to stay for the master's. So the first thing is that it's very international. So for me, it was very important that not only the people are international, but also what I'm studying. So I knew at the time I didn't want to stay in Holland. I wanted to um, be able to work globally. And so it was really important to me that the content that I was learning was also international. So the case studies that we do, the companies that we interact with, everything is very international. And that was really important to me. Secondly, of course, it's still important to pick a school that has a good reputation and a good network. Um, you need to make sure that uh, you have, obviously everyone um, studies because they wanna find a job. And so it's really important that you can build that network during your studies. So, during your uh, master's or bachelor's, whether you're, while you're studying, you also need to be thinking about finding a job. And so you need to be able to have the opportunities and the resources to meet the people um, who might be able to give you a job or help you out in the future. And that's something that I think RSM does really well in. We have the career events. We have many, we have two really big career fairs. Um, and aside from that, we also have things like guest lectures. And so there's lots of ways and chances to meet people in the industries that you're looking to work for. Um, of course, it's really important that you take advantage of those opportunities. So um, these jobs won't come to you. You have to go out there and really take advantage of these opportunities, but at least RSM offers those opportunities. Finally, I think that it's a very practical program in that the things that we're studying, usually it's like real life cases. We're not just reading theory in a textbook, but we're also learning about how to actually do things. Um, if you're looking at IBA, the bachelor's program, in your first year, you already have to build a real business plan for a real company. So, I mean, it's very, very hands-on. Same with the master's. So these are the programs that are um, currently offered. I think there's, oh, there is one. There's one new program this year, um, which is not on this list, but it is medical and business innovation, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Um, or is it this one? Oh, here we go. Yes, this is the full list of all the programs. That was the old slide. I'm sorry. Um, and this is the full list of programs. If you have a business background, you should be able to apply for almost all of these. Um, if you don't have a business background, it's important to look later at the credits that you have to see if you're eligible for the right program. Or if you have no business credits in your background, um, you might want to look at Master in Management, which is the general program for students without a business background. If you want to find more information, obviously the website is a great place to look. Also, there's a really good resource that I always like to recommend, which is talk to a current student. Um, and this is where you can talk to students who are currently at RSM studying that course. Um, so I, obviously I can give you information about more general things, but I don't know all the programs in detail. I personally studied marketing, so I can help you with marketing, but I don't know the other programs. So um, for that, I really recommend talking to the current students um, on the link. If they don't reply or anything happens, let me know. I will I will pass on the message that they're not replying. Um, of course, we also have online open days and online presentations. So feel free to also join those to find out more about the content. I'm not sure if anyone's interest, anyone online is interested in IBA, but if so, um, I will probably cover that a little bit less in this presentation. So if you need more information, you have more questions, feel free to contact me after. Um, but basically it's a three-year program that covers a little bit of all the management courses. 
Um, and the only, it's, it's a very fixed course in that you can't really choose your major and minor because they want to encourage you to become a well-rounded manager. So you have a lot of the basics. Um, and then in your third year, that's when you can choose to either go on exchange or do an internship um, or do a minor. But this is, so this is the bachelor program, undergraduate. For the master's, um, basically the master's is split into two parts. We have the core courses, uh, which is the fixed courses that everyone has to take. And then we have the elective part. Um, and you'll also notice that alongside these courses, you have your thesis. So um, I had some questions today about how, um, how tiring is it <laughs> at school? And um, uh, my usual answer is that basically you have to realize that you're going to be studying, looking for a job and doing your thesis at the same time. So it's not, uh, it's not an easy breeze that you can just sit around and do nothing. It is, it is gonna be busy, but it's not busy in that you're just studying books all day. You're busy doing lots of different things. You're busy networking, you're busy um, doing your research. So it's a lot of different things that you will be doing, but you will be relatively busy if you do it right. <laughs> Uh, another question that I get a lot is about jobs. Obviously, as I mentioned earlier, people, everyone wants to find a good job. Um, and so the good thing is that we have the Career Center and they offer a lot of resources to help you while you're looking for jobs. So for example, we have our online job board. Um, this job board is a really great place to start when you're looking for a job because these jobs um, are companies that have told RSM, we like RSM students, we want your students to come, your graduates to come work for us. And so these, here are some jobs we have. So obviously these jobs are not um, exclusive for RSM, but at least you know these companies already probably have some kind of connection with RSM. So it's a great place to start. Of course, they all also offer things like CV review and workshops. If you don't feel very confident about, um, for example, doing an interview, you can always go to them and say, hey, um, I'm applying for this job. Could you help me prep for the interview? There's lots of different things they can do for you. Um, and I think it's a really useful resource to have. As I mentioned earlier, we also have the career fairs. And so the career fairs are when lots of companies will come on campus and you really, it's a really, really great opportunity to really get yourself out there and get to know the company. So especially a lot of people will ask me, is it possible to find a job in Holland? And I always say that it's all about how much you're willing to find one. So for example, I had international friends who, when we had those job fairs, they would go to every single stand and they would just ask, do you hire international students? And if they said yes, they would give their CV. If they said no, they'd say, okay, thank you. And even just doing that, you can already find out which companies will accept international students, which companies maybe are looking for, for example, Chinese speakers, things like that. So get to know your, your market, basically, research which companies are available, and then get yourself out there and network. Talk to the guest lecturers that come, talk to the companies that you visit. Um, so many different things you can do, but you have to make sure that you put yourself out there and um, yeah, really try to, to step out of your comfort zone a little bit. Um, if you want, you can find on our website, there is the full employment report. So I recommend looking at that. I haven't updated this in a while actually. So you should probably check the updated employment report. Um, these are our top employers. Uh, I'm not gonna go through each story right now because we have limited time, but um, if you are interested, you can also check down LinkedIn which is a great way as well when you're studying to get to know alumni. So you can find on LinkedIn and see where everyone is at now, what they're studying. Um, the employment report that I mentioned earlier also gives information about where students are, are working now. Um, you probably heard, if you've been listening to other presentations today, you've probably already heard this, but um, the good thing about studying in Holland is that when you graduate, you get one year, uh, a v one year visa to uh, look for a job. So, RSM always encourages students to start looking for a job early. So I remember in January, we had a LinkedIn training and things like that. So they start encouraging you early to look for a job. So if you think of it that way, you have basically a year and a half to find a job, um, which in my opinion is, is enough if you really make sure that you try and maybe um, don't always, maybe lower your expectations a little bit. Don't say, oh, I'm only gonna apply for Google or things like that. If you really you know, open your net and willing to try new things, build your experience, build your network. I do think it is possible. So um, we get a lot of questions about eligibility. So whether you can apply. Um, today, most of the questions I was answering at the fair were about eligibility. Um, so I know it's something that students have the most questions about. So I'm gonna do my best to give you 
um, the tool to figure out whether you're eligible or not. I can already tell you now, if you email the recruitment office asking them to check your CV, they won't check it. <laughs> they are very, very busy um, and they don't have the time to pre-screen every um, potential student. Um, so this is why I'm going to give you the tools now. Hopefully you can check yourself and figure out if you're eligible uh, by yourself and then you can apply with a better confidence that you're eligible. So these are the main things that RSM looks at, English, GPA, GMAT, um, your relevant courses and your whether your application is submitted on time or before it fills up. So um, as some of you may know, in, in Holland, there's two types of uh, universities. And so in uh, we are a research university. And so we look at research university bachelors. Um, I'm not going to go into details about that part. I think the more important part is the relevant courses. So every master's program has a link, a list in the, on the website, which says how many credits uh, you need in each type of course. So for example, for finance, you need 20 credits in qualitative and quantitative research methods or statistics. Uh, and you also need 40 credits in business administration, including finance. So if you're looking at a certain master's, definitely have a look at the website and make sure you check. Also uh, note that these are uh, EC, European credits. So Taiwan credits, if I remember correctly, one Taiwan credit is around two European credits. So just make sure you keep in mind that it's not 20 Taiwanese credits, it's EC, European credits. So a lot of, a lot of uh, the students in Taiwan struggle with finding research courses because it's not something that's common in Taiwan and you guys don't have to do a thesis in your bachelor. So this is definitely one that comes up a lot. Um, but these are questions, these are the kinds of examples of things that fall under research courses. So we have statistics, things like uh, any kind of research project that you do, quantitative decision making, spreadsheet modeling, anything that can um, that reminds you of doing research, it's probably on the right path. If you find that something is you think it's research, but it's not in the name, you can also provide RSM with a university written course description. And if the course description says, oh, we did a research project, that can also help. So any extra information you can give RSM to help them see, oh yes, this person did research will always be good. Um, here's an example of uh, a student that they, or an example of a CV that they might see and they would look at, okay, which things count as research? So they counted economic statistics, they counted and empirical research methods and the thesis, obviously. Um, these are credits that would fall under research. The other example um, is to look at the credits that you need for that specific program. So um, if you want to do marketing, you do need to have some marketing courses. If you want to do supply chain, you need at least uh, six credits of supply chain. So these are also things that you need to look at. And what you can do is basically what this example shows ask your university for a English list of your courses and just highlight all the things that you think match the description and then just add them up and see whether you fulfill the, the requirements or not. Because this is literally what the, recru the recruitment office, is going, the admissions office are going to do. They will look at your course, they will look at the ones that fulfill the, the requirements and count them. So basically try and put yourself in their shoes, think about what looks like the right course. And from there you can kind of calculate yourself whether you have enough credits or not. Hopefully that gives you guys enough um, information to figure out whether you have the right courses or not. Um, so for example, this, this person, um, in this example, this person has enough finance and business courses, but they don't have enough research courses. Um, and in this case, basically, they would recommend that the person complete uh, the pre-master. So because RSM noticed that there are many really good students, who just happen to be lacking research credits. And unfortunately, if you're already graduated, you can't, you can't try and get more research credits. So they created this online pre-master for students specifically who need the research credits. Um, and if you apply for any of the masters and they realize that you are in this situation, you don't have the research credits, they will automatically tell you, you need to do the pre-master, would you like to do the pre-master? The good thing with the pre-master is that it's online. So you can stay in Taiwan and keep working save some extra money for your funds to go to Holland um, and yeah, and then complete the pre-master and then go on to do whichever master you were interested in before. 
Um, as I mentioned earlier, so yeah, if you have, um, if the course name doesn't show that that course fulfills the requirement, add the course descriptions. Um, and also, for example, if you haven't graduated yet, you can add the list of courses you're going to study in case that helps. If your thesis is not included, make sure you add that, things like that. So make sure, basically try and give them enough reason to, to, to show that you qualify. If you don't have enough um, business courses, so let's say you have maybe 10, but not, not 20 uh, or 40, sorry, then you can always also try to do the online minor program, which is something you can see on this link here. I don't know if you, you can't see my mouse. That one. Yes, that one. Um, so that one, that will give you 15 credits. So if you're missing some business courses, then you can try to do the minor to, to, um, to, to boost those courses, the credits. If you're missing more than 20 credits in um, a certain area, they recommend that maybe just look at master in management, because if you're really, really far off the requirements, then it might be harder for you to actually even get the requirements. So it might be just easier for you to look at master in management. Hopefully that clarifies about relevant courses, because I get a lot of questions about that. So hopefully that helps. Um, the other thing that RSM looks at a lot is GPA and GMAT. So one thing is that um, they, they, they acknowledge the fact that they don't fully understand the GPAs in different countries because every university has different rules, et cetera. And so it's really important that your GMAT meets 600. If your GPA, so here it says that they, they require an above average GPA, which means your GPA needs to seem like a good GPA. So I know this sounds very vague, but basically um, you don't want a GPA that's just passing. If your GPA is just passing, then it doesn't look as good. It needs to look like something, um, I would say, in the range between 70 and 80. So if you have between 70 and 80, if you have 80 out of 100, then you're, you're fine. But if you have 70 to 80, then maybe try and boost your GMAT a little bit, your GMAT score a little bit. If you have 80 or I don't know, 78, 79, um, as long as you have 600, you should be fine. Um, but you do have to at least meet 600. Um, so it's very black and white and that if you meet the requirement, you'll be fine. But if you don't meet the requirement, you also, they won't do any exceptions. And they don't look at work experience. They don't look at um, extra motivation things. It's just about the numbers, basically. So make sure you meet those requirements. English, so um, again, same thing. Just make sure you meet the English requirements. If you don't do the test again, <laughs> study hard and do it again, um, because yeah, otherwise it's just a waste if you apply and you don't meet the meet the minimum requirements. So make sure you meet the minimum requirements when you apply, which are these numbers, by the way. Um, yes. So if you have gone through everything and you say yes, I meet all the requirements and I'm ready to apply, basically um, applications always open on October first. So for example, if you're looking to join 2022 next year, September, then right now you can already apply. And I recommend applying as soon as possible because some of the programs do have a maximum capacity. So uh, other than international management STEM, so it's the only exception, all the other ones are rolling admission in that when you apply, the admissions office will only look at your application and evaluate your application. They're not going to compare you to other students. And so because of that, they can respond to your application within about two months, eight weeks, uh, six to eight weeks. Um, but if the program is full, so some of these programs that are more popular, they have a cap. And so if it is full, it doesn't matter whether you meet the requirements or not. There are no more spots. They won't accept you. So I do recommend any, anyone who's interested in applying to the capped programs, definitely apply early. Um, if you're looking to apply to 2023, then that's great. You have lots of time. So right now, focus on your GMAT, get your scores in. And then when it opens 1st of October, you can apply. Um, so yeah, the earlier, the better, always. Um, some basic tips. I will go through them very quickly because I realize time flies. Okay. Uh, make sure, yeah, make sure you look at the website to check everything like I mentioned before. Make sure you evaluate your own profile. Make sure you meet the requirements. Try to make sure your documents are PDFs and the right way up, anything that you can do to help the admissions office make their life a little bit easier. Um, you can see they got over 7,000 applications last year. Um, and 
yeah, they have to do all of these applications um, by themselves. And so it's one by one. And so it does take some time. So please be patient with them. They are doing the best that they can, especially close to the deadlines. They're really, really busy. So um, that's why it's really good if you can check the website yourself before you email them questions and before you apply. So once you have applied within two weeks, they will do the pre-screening in that they will let you know, okay, we got your documents, nothing's missing, everything's fine. At this point, if maybe they can't open a document or something's missing, they will let you know, so you can always change that. Once they're sure that they have everything, they will take about four to eight weeks to evaluate your application, and then they will send you the results um, within four to eight weeks. Again, exception for international management SEMS. If anyone is interested in SEMS, maybe let me know separately because it's a very different program, has many different requirements and um, different application process. So when you get your result, you will always get a um, one of these three options. So either eligibility statement. So if you apply, but you're missing something, then you they can give you an eligibility statement, which tells you everything you've provided so far. It makes you eligible for the program, but keep in mind, this is not an offer. And so if you have an eligibility statement and the program fills up, you don't have a space. So it, that's why it's really important to do make sure you try to get all your documents as early as possible, because if it does fill up, even if you have eligibility statement, it's not an offer. So you need to have all your documents submitted and evaluated before you can have an offer of admission. Finally, if you get a denial, there will always be a reason included. And the reason cannot be because of work experience or CV or anything like that. The, the, off, the reason is always about numbers. It's always, or credits. So it'll always be, for example, not enough research credits or um, not enough GMAT score. So it'll always be, they'll always give you a reason. They'll never not give you a reason. Practical things, um, I think a lot of this is on the website, so I'm not going to go through it. The most important thing um, that people ask me about scholarships, there are not that many scholarships, I do have to say. Um, I do encourage students to try and apply for them because you never know, you might get one. Just don't depend on it. Don't say like, oh, I'm going to get a scholarship. I don't need to worry about money um, because they are really hard. They're very competitive. Um, you're also probably competing with a whole region, the whole of Asia, for example. So it's, it's really hard to get one, but definitely apply. It doesn't cost anything to apply for a scholarship. Um, since I'm running out of time, I'll go through this really quickly. Um, these are the facilities that we have. This is the, the fun part of the presentation, but I don't have as much time, so I'll skip through. Um, we do have a language center. So if anyone does want to learn Dutch, you can um, get cheaper courses there. We have a supermarket on campus, which I always get really excited about. Um, but it's because I have to always explain that in Holland, we don't have... 7-Eleven, we don't have Family Mart. Everything closes early compared to Taiwan. So having a supermarket on campus is a luxury. Um, but yes, we also have food courts and the library. Um, Rotterdam in general, I really like Rotterdam, but that's because I like cities. So um, some of you might know that uh, um, many, many years ago, there was a big fire in Rotterdam. And so all the buildings burned down. And because of that, the government thought, well, everything's burned down anyway, let's make it new. And so lots of the buildings that you will see in Rotterdam are very modern looking. They're very, I always say a little strange looking. There's some, if, you, if you're interested in architecture, everyone says Rotterdam is a good place to go because they have really unique architecture, which to me is just another way of saying funny looking buildings. But, um, but no, it is a really cool city and it's really international. It's a business center. Um, there are so many companies and so many headquarters there now. Um, you don't need to know Dutch if you don't want to stay there long term. You can, you'll survive perfectly fine with English. Um, it's the biggest port in Europe. So like I said, there's lots of companies, especially logistic companies. That's why supply chain is one of our most popular programs. Um, tips for living in Rotterdam. I always recommend cooking because it saves you a lot of money. It's a lot cheaper to buy groceries and cook. Um, and it's more fun to cook with friends. So I always recommend that you can try lots of different cuisines. Um, and there's a lot of nice places to walk around and enjoy in Rotterdam. Um, the good thing about being at RSM is that you will have a lot of school organized activities. So there'll be a lot of student societies that organize social events and things. So you don't have to, it's a lot easier to socialize and find safe and uh, fun settings to yeah, enjoy your life, um, work hard and play hard. That's what we business students always say. So um, I think you will get a link from about contacting me, but in case you don't, um, this is my email. You're welcome to email me. Um, I also offer one-on-one -on -one, um, 
10 to 15 minute calls. So if anyone really, really has a question that they cannot find on the website and they really need help with, you can contact me um, or use the QR code and fill in the form. Um, like I said, I also really recommend using the um, Talk to a Student since that is a really great resource for finding out more. Um, yeah, and in case anyone's interested, this is also on my Instagram. Um, I also have a podcast. So if anyone's interested in practicing their English before they go to Varada or they want to learn more about cultures, that's what my podcast is about. So you're welcome to listen to that as well. And you can also contact me via Instagram if you have more questions. Um, if you prefer that to email, that's also fine. Um, 